All seven subspecies of geese identified earlier make up our wintering population. In recent years, record numbers of geese have wintered in northwest Oregon and southwest Washington. Total numbers generally exceed 125,000 birds. Prior to the 1970s, the winter goose population averaged fewer than 25,000 geese in northwest Oregon and southwest Washington. Historically, these geese were the dusky Canada goose subspecies. The dusky population, however, began declining about 1979, with an accelerated drop in the mid-1980s. The decline is attributed to several earthquake-related changes in Alaska nesting habitat, combined with excessive harvest in wintering areas. The following information shows some of the changes which have occurred on the breeding grounds. My name is Dan Logan and I'm a wildlife biologist with the U.S. Forest Service in Cordova, Alaska. And the role that the Forest Service plays in the management of dusky Canada geese is that we're the land managers of the breeding grounds, Copper River Delta. The Delta is about a 700,000 acre wetlands. It's home, it's a stopover area for migratory shorebirds. It's home for moose, brown bear, black bear, beaver, wolves, coyotes, bald eagles, and also a variety of waterfowl. One of the interesting things about the Delta is it's in a very tectonically active area, which means about every 400 years we go through an uplift, but because the Delta is fed by a series of glacial-fed streams, millions of tons of sediment are deposited on the Delta each year. So what the Delta does is it uplifts about every 400 years, and then it slowly subsides back down again and goes back into a wetland. We experienced our last uplift in about 1964. It was the Good Friday earthquake. During that, the whole delta was uplifted about six to nine feet. And what happened is what we did have, which once was tidally inundated uh, saltwater, grass, and, and sedge environment, when this uplift occurred and the delta lifted up, it drained very well, and we started to have an invasion of shrubs of Myrica gale, like you see here, alder, willow, and this started moving out towards the seaward edge, and we started to have much more shrubs on the delta as we used to. And what that did was change some of the energy budgets of the predators. Coyotes can easily move around through the shrubs, and we started to increase a, a very rapid, or started to experience a very rapid predation rate on the duskies. We're, we're now at about a 15% nest success, where we were much higher prior to that. And it's a whole suite of predators that are causing this. It's not really just one. We're seeing avian predation from bald eagles, gulls, raptors, we're seeing mammalian predation from, from wolves, coyotes, brown bears, and black bears. We have over seven species of sedge. Uh, this particular one here is Carex lingbii. This is what was composed most of the Copper River Delta. It was a lot of sedges and grasses. This is a very important food source for duskies. Uh, also provides very good uh, nest building material. A lot of these sedges here have been replaced by shrubs, uh, willows, and myrica gale. The Copper River Delta is dissected by thousands of, of sloughs that come along, and this is what we're, we're standing on right now as one of the slough levees. Prior to the 1964 earthquake, these slough levees were the highest areas on the delta, and they're also one of, the, one of the best nesting sites for dusky Canada geese. And the reason so is that prior to the uplift, the delta was influenced by spring high tides and geese were finding the highest spot on the delta they could find to put their nest so they could escape from their nest being flooded by the high tides. After the uplift, what you're seeing here is an invasion of, of willows, uh, spruce, alder, myrica gale. So what it's done is converted what was some of the optimum nesting habitat for duskies into these shrub areas here, which mammalian predators can move through quite easily and predate on a lot of the dusky nests. This area is developing at a much slower rate than what we're losing the old marsh or what was said turning into shrubs. In a few more years, we'll probably see about 3,000 acres that will be developed in this new marsh area that will make eventually good uh, dusky Canada goose nesting habitat. Cackling Canada geese also experienced a sharp decline throughout the Pacific Flyway. Cackler numbers dropped from an estimated 400,000 in the late 1960s to fewer than 25,000 in the mid-1980s. The decline is believed to be largely due to sport harvest in California and subsistence harvest in Alaska. The season for this subspecies was closed in 1984. 
In recent years, the cackler population has continued to increase at a rapid rate. In the early 1990s, for example, the cackler fall flight was estimated at over 160,000 birds, an increase which warranted a limited reopening of the cackler season in 1994. In recent years, there has been a significant increase in the proportion of the cackling geese wintering in northwest Oregon and southwest Washington, along with a proportional decrease in California. The cackling Canada geese are the most numerous subspecies wintering in our area. Beginning in the 1970s, the Taverners goose population has increased from fewer than 2,000 to more than 60,000 wintering in northwest Oregon and southwest Washington. These geese are now a significant component of the geese wintering in this area. But again, cackling Canada goose numbers are increasing rapidly. Reasons for the increase in taverners geese are unknown, but may be simply due to secure breeding habitat in Alaska, combined with changing farm practices in the Willamette Valley, which create wintering habitat favorable for this subspecies.